Ah, that would help too. Thank you. We, we won't do do-overs if I make any more mistakes, I promise. <laughs> Okay, welcome to uh, Lecture 2, Real Analysis. Uh, last time we, uh, in Lecture 1, started by discussing some preliminary uh, tools that we'll need to construct uh, the real numbers. Uh, we started by constructing the rational numbers, and if you recall, the way we did that was we defined sets and relations, and a couple of uh, important uh, relations are uh, equivalence relations. Uh, another idea that... Uh, you can define using relations as the idea of a function, and we'll say more about that. Uh, you'll see more examples of that later. The idea of an equivalence relation is, uh, is basically a way of grouping together objects in a set that you want to consider as being equivalent. And so when we defined the rational numbers, we defined them as equivalence classes of certain objects. And uh, because this is the way we grew up learning about rationals, those objects are named uh, by these symbols, P over Q, for instance, right? Like four-fifths, one-thirds. But the way you should think about them formally is as an object that represents a whole class of things, okay? So the, uh, the first example of that might be, um, one example of that might be the class one-half, which contains a bunch of things in it. What were those things? They were, they were pairs. They were ordered pairs. One, two is an element in this class. But what's another thing in this class? Two, comma, four. What's another ordered pair in this class? Three, six. There's a bunch of them. I won't write them all down. OK? OK. These all represent the same thing. And of course, you grow, grew up realizing that, or grew up learning uh, fractions this way. You grew up uh, saying, oh, I could call this class one half, but I could also call it, um, I could also call it uh, two, four, or three, six. These are all names for the same thing. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and, and what is the equivalence relation? Well, it's just the usual cross ratio that you're used to thinking about. So here, Pn equals Qm is just the cross ratio you get by, comp uh, this is the way you grew up learning about how to tell if fractions were equivalent. You take the cross, you cross multiply three times four and two times six and, six and check if they're equal, okay? Okay, and, and so this is in fact an equivalence relation which satisfies three properties. What are the properties? Reflects, uh, the reflexive property says that one half better be equivalent to one half. Okay. Uh, the symmetric property is the second property, and that says what? About, let's say, two things that are in, in this uh, class. Yeah, if one half and two fourths are in the same class, then two fourths are and one half are in the same class. Okay, that's a very obvious property you'd want to be true about an equivalence relation. And then the last property says that if a first thing is equivalent to a second thing and a second thing is equivalent to a third, then the first should be equivalent to the third. Okay, very natural properties for an equivalence relation. Okay, so this is where we ended last time. We uh, ended by constructing the rationals as a bunch of classes. Okay, so uh, here's what we want to do today. We want to talk about the arithmetic structure of the rationals. And we want to understand in what sense does, do the rationals extend the integers. So uh, let's, uh, let's begin. We can uh, begin by uh, thinking a bit about what this means. Let's roll up the boards here. So our plan, our plan then is to talk about properties of Q. Q is our symbol for the rational numbers. And uh, in particular, we want to talk about 
its arithmetic and its order properties. And we'll see that that leads into a discussion of the, the algebraic structure of Q, which uh, is naturally a field. So the first thing to, to ask yourself is, what do you mean by addition? And just to set the stage a little bit, let me remind you that all we have right now, as we've defined the rationals, is a bunch of classes, right? So here is the whole universe of rational numbers. And inside this universe uh, are classes of objects. So you know, there's all these fractions, which I'm writing instead of as ordered pairs, as fractions. Right, there's a whole bunch of these. Um, uh, Etc. Okay? But some of these are equivalents. We've grouped them in classes. Right? Some of these are equivalent. <laughs> oh, these are definitely not equivalent. <laughs> Some of these are equivalent. <laughs> Let's make sure my picture says, uh, speaks truth. And these are, of course, equivalent to other things, but they, they're, I mean, there's, there's probably lots of other things in here, right? This is in some class of, of, of stuff, right? There's other things in here, but these are classes. Okay, great. So. Here's the thing we want to do now. We want to talk about addition. How are we going to define uh, addition? So um, let's take a stab at it. What does it mean to add this class to this class? What would that mean? Well, let's, let's, let's suggest a definition. Here's one possible definition. And I'll just tell you right off the bat, it's, it's a bad one, OK? <laughs> this is a bad definition, OK? But you tell me what's wrong with this definition. Um, how about, uh, oh, this is uh, probably um, a, a very common way to define addition if you're in grade school. Uh, this is a way a lot of people get wrong. All right, let's define addition to be add the numerators and the no denominators, OK? You can't stop me from defining addition this way. <laughs> OK? Now, um, wh what you could do is point out to me why this is not a good definition. Why is this not a good definition, Willie? OK, what Willie is saying is that the, th this definition has a following problem. Aside from the fact that it seems to be perhaps meaningless, that's another issue, it has a more basic problem. And the more basic problem is it's not what we call well-defined. Okay? So let me just illustrate with an example. If I tell you to add, to add the fraction 1 half and 1 third according to this rule, you will get 2 fifths. Okay? Remember, these are just objects. We don't really, I'm not associating a meaning to them. I'm just using this rule. Uh, but what's, what's, what is one half? It's also equivalent to lots of other things, but in particular, it's equivalent to two fourths according to our definition of uh, rational numbers, right? But what if I now add this to the same fraction, one third? What will I get? Three, seven. But you can immediately check that even though these two things are in the same class, these two things, the result is what? They are not equivalent according to the equivalence relation. Are you with me? It's a basic problem. You want, anytime you're dealing with an object that's defined in terms of classes, the definitions you use should not depend on the representatives you pick. OK? Should not depend on the representatives you pick. So um, another example might be um, equivalence classes of college students, right? One, one way to, to define equivalence relation is to look at all the freshmen, all the sophomores, all the juniors, all the seniors. Class by class, there are four classes, and these are equivalence classes, OK? And I want 